Hi, my name is Keith Cooper from North Light Images. In this short video, I'm going to look at aspects of calibrating a monitor. Um, this monitor here is a BenQ SW2700. Um, it's quite an advanced monitor, but I'm just looking at the basics of profiling calibrating a monitor here, and I'm going to be using the Data Color Spider. For this now uh, this is the spider x elite there have been loads of versions of the data color spider over the years um, any of the more recent ones will still work with uh, the data color software and with uh, a monitor like this if you go back to the very old ones you may find either that the software won't run anymore that supports them and any sort of calibrator more than 10 15 years old is uh, may well have drifted a bit so uh, just because you find one at jumble sale don't think necessarily you've got an ideal good calibrator might work still might not anyway this is the uh, x packaging has changed a bit over the years but the, uh, the basic device is the same uh, this is a colorimeter it measures light color um, the software that you run, and this is being driven from a MacBook, uh, works very similarly on PCs. The software will change colour of the screen, and the software uh, then steps through a whole load of different colours. This device, which is a USB device, measures the actual colour coming off the screen. It then uses a combination of what the colours should be, that the software knows this and the measurements to create a monitor profile and also to calibrate your monitor. The two are different. Calibration is setting your monitor to a known state, uh, whereas profile is actually measuring the characteristics of the monitor. In this instance, because this is a hardware calibrated monitor, I've used, uh, and you can use the uh, spider for this i've used the benq software to set this monitor now this monitor because i'm filming it is set to a somewhat lower color temperature than you might normally use for editing uh, normally you might use d65 or 6500k uh, for your monitor for general purpose use and indeed this macbook is set to that however to make it a bit easier to show on the video because of the uh, white balance for the room i've set this monitor to d50 or 5000k the two aren't quite the same but they're very close d50 will in many conditions look a little warm uh, and may look wrong in a suitably dim environment for editing and things, D50 can look perfectly normal. Um, it just depends on things, but that's another matter. I've looked at that in some other videos and I will return to it when I consider aspects of soft proofing. But anyway, anyway this is the Spider software. I, I would say that there are several different versions. This is the Spider X Elite, which is the top end version. Um, there are usually uh, and most calibrators are this is so there are usually several versions of the product uh, covering a different price range basic monitor calibration is a feature of all of them and what's more you're almost certainly using the same actual device so the difference is you get more features um, what I would say is I've done detailed reviews of uh, many products like this um, on the Northlight Images website. They go into far more detail than I can really cover in a, in a video. And if there was one thing I had to say is that if you look at the software and there's a feature you don't understand, you can't see why you would bother changing it or you don't know what you should set it to, take the defaults. The default settings are almost always the settings that you should start off with. Now, Data Color have, and this is something I've, I've said they've done well for many years, um, they have extensive help information you can pull up, which is not only how to use the uh, software, the hardware, how to connect things up, but it also explains why you're doing things. Um, now this to me is absolutely superb. Um, I can open up this software and there may be features of it I can't remember. Um, you don't use it very often. You might only calibrate once a month and even then you just, just do it and it's done. 
and, uh, and that's it. But there is this help in this and it's a, it's a small book about colour management. And you get this even with the basic model. Um, so I would say that unless you actually need the features that you get on the more advanced models, um, buy a basic model. Um, they're the same device essentially. Uh, you can see I don't sell calibrators or hardware or software at all um, because I'm saying go for what's cheapest that works of the range. So anyway, this however is the top end model. The device itself this clips together, um, the little lens on it here. This acts as a counterweight because I'm going to have to position this in front of the screen. There is fortunately on this monitor a little hatch at the top so I can actually connect it like that. It's a uh, USB device so I can make use of the USB socket here on the side of the monitor or I could plug it into the laptop itself. Plug that in. Open this little hatch and put that there. I'll move it in a moment when I set things up. I'm just going to step through the basic calibration here. There's a useful set of reminders um, and even with monitors like this that come on instantly, it's best to leave them 20-30 minutes before doing a calibration. There is a bit of a drift of monitors when they first come up. It's very little these days, certainly for higher end monitors like this. Um, the specifications, they're good to go within a few minutes. But just for completeness sake, let everything warm up. And I would say if you're letting them warm up, uh, let the uh, calibrator warm up as well. Anyway, there's a checklist of things to do here. I'll select the monitor because this system lets me profile this or this one. Now this one I'm not bothered about too much. I have got it calibrated, profiled, uh, but I wouldn't edit on a MacBook screen. Um, you know, this is an oldish one, but laptop screens, the way they change when you move your head, I, oh, you change the brightness of the screen just by moving, uh, not conducive to accurate editing. However, we've selected uh, this particular monitor here. It's spotted that it's there. And choose the type of display. Uh, there are um, There is an advanced mode where you can set all kinds of settings, go straight through to do it. This um, is what I do if I'm normally using the software, but for purposes of this, I'm just stepping through the basics. So we've got choice here of desktop, laptop, or projector. For a projector, you set the projector up where you're going to use it, you point this at the screen. Um, and that, uh, you're measuring the light reflected from the projector off the screen into this. Um, it's a little bit more involved and I certainly can't demonstrate it here. But projector setup is well worth doing. Uh, projectors tend to have um, the color is quite a bit off. So uh, calibrating and profiling your projector really can make a difference. And certainly if you're using it to project photos, you should definitely do that. It asks me for the manufacturer, that's got the details there. Asks the type of illumination. Um, it's worth checking to get this right. Um, there is additional detail here. It's just the fine detail of setting things up does depend on knowing the kind of display that you've got. But there are details here. I can go for this. So I'd use um, uh, CCL, uh, CCFL fluorescent backlight for this old laptop here. Uh, not on this. This is LED based. Now I've got the option here of just going through a step by step. There are in uh, the higher end software here there are ways of matching multiple displays 
and I can always go to what's called the expert console here and just do all the settings straight off. But we'll just go through the step-by-step -step one here because it's easier. Um, I'm doing a full calibration. It says gamma 2.2, that's recommended. And as I said before, if you don't know why you want a specific setting, stick to the recommended ones. Now, and this one here it says a white point of 65. Now, I've hardware calibrated this monitor to uh, 5,000, so I shouldn't really need to make much difference. Now, you set this to whatever you want. I could, if this was uh, a normal monitor, I might use 6,500, but I'm using 5,000 on this, mainly just to make it easier to see on this video, although it can make soft proofing easier as well. But, uh, We'll go there, I'm going to go to 5000, and brightness it says 120. Now, I will normally set the brightness in my office, uh, which is darker than this, I will set the brightness to perhaps 100. That's because I'm working in relatively dim conditions. It's quite bright here and subject to the sun coming out. Uh, and changing brightness here, so 120 is more reasonable. It's a brighter, uh, a brighter light. But um, so I've set this gamma 2.2, 5k, 5000k. It's very similar to D50, and brightness to 120. I shouldn't need to make any adjustments to brightness, but you will usually need to alter the brightness of the uh, monitor. Some monitors, the software can do that for you. Other monitors, you may need to alter the brightness settings and things while you're doing the profiling and calibration. But anyway, we've got the settings here, so I will just go next. It's done a room lighting. Uh, I should have moved this down here to do the measurement. It's done a room lighting measurement, and it says the room lighting is too bright. Um, and um, that basically I shouldn't really edit in these conditions. Yeah, that's useful if you can actually change the room lighting. But we'll ignore this step for the moment because this is a very artificial situation I've set here. And the sun has just come out again, um, which is a problem with this. With any ambient light measurement system that changes when the lighting changes, I'm not really that keen on using. Um, however, we'll accept this. wants me to place the spider on the screen. I'll lower that. It can help to tilt the monitor back a little bit just so that the weight of the device holds it against the screen. If you have a special anti-reflection screen, such as on the SW321C I looked at recently, big 32 inch monitor, be very careful at this stage because you don't want to be touching the screen um, because it does have a special coating, anti-reflection coating. But we're all set there. So now I'm going to go through a whole lot of different colours, settings and things, and I'm just going to measure things. Um, this is so the software can build its um, yeah can build its settings up. And here are the colour steps for the monitor. Now, this is a wide gamut monitor, so the colours here will be out of gamut for the video that I'm recording. Now video here is used in the REC 709 uh, color space, which is very similar to the smaller sRGB color space uh, and is less than the Adobe 98 that this has. That's most visible on these blue steps here. Uh, whereas these early colours look blue and I'm looking on the uh, monitor on the, to the side of the camera and I can see it's now taken on a distinct purplish tinge, whereas on here it's just a deep intense blue. So we don't worry about that. That's just one of the vagaries of trying to do video, much like the sun coming out. Measurements completed, we can get rid of the device here. Uh, 
I would just note the tripod screw bush at the bottom here. Um, useful if you're doing projector calibration, profiling, you just put this on top of a, onto a tripod, normal screw fit and point it at your uh, screen. And there we go, it's run through and it's done the calibration. Um, I can have a reminder, the software will remind me. Um, you probably don't really on a monitor like this unless you're doing really high end stuff. You probably don't really want to do uh, profiling more often than once a month or so. Um, certainly I don't bother with this. Uh, in some places you might want to do it once a week. Um, just tedious. <laughs> So we save the profile here, and we're done. And that's it. It's uh, it's all set. Uh, the monitor has been uh, set up. It's now have been calibrated to a particular temperature. It's been calibrated to a particular brightness, or it would have been if I'd um, done it properly without the sun coming in like this. And um, it's set up, and that's it. Um, other features I should mention that you've got here. Another feature of the Spider X Elite, um, which I'm not going to go into in a great deal of detail, is that it helps with soft proofing. Now this allows you to use colour profiles that you've got and images and it gives you an idea on the screen what they will look like printed. Um, it's fairly good. Um, I use this in inside Photoshop. However, you do have to remember the vagaries of matching prints and screens. Uh, you can actually never match a screen and a print. Um, they're two different things. This is reflecting light, albeit quite bright at the moment. This is emitting light. The characteristics of them are completely different. So, the absolute worst way of checking for a screen print match is to hold your print up against the screen. And this is the data colour test image. This is a slightly older version of it. Um, this is available for download on the Northlight Images website. I use it for printer testing all the time. It's one of my standard test prints. But I can set an image here and it will display on here as a potential soft proof. Now, here's the current data color version of this image. It's quite complex, but not difficult, and that once again we've got the soft proof advice here. There's a complete walkthrough of what this stuff does, what it's, how it works. Um, it's a nice feature. I wouldn't use it because I print from Photoshop and it's got soft proofing in it, in it as well. If you've got, uh, if you print from Lightroom, then Lightroom has various soft proofing options. So this is a, a nice touch and it's really good for learning about uh, proofing, various other aspects and that, but not necessarily something I'd want. So it, it goes back to buy the version of the calibrator that fits your needs. Um, but anyway, there you have it. There's the uh, Spider X Elite. Um, if you've got any questions, please do ask. Uh, there are loads of articles about colour management and things on the Northland Images website and printing um, that go into far more detail than I can really cover in a video. So hopefully this is of some use. Uh, please do think about subscribing to the channel. Um, I've got lots more things like this that I want to cover over time and uh, suggestions and questions are always welcome so thank you.